Good evening once again and welcome to NBC News. I'm Janet Aces bringing you the stories making headlines. Libyan rebels are battling troops loyal to Colonel Muammar Gaddafi for control of Tripoli after they launched an assault on the capital from several directions. Rebel commanders say they have taken control of about 80% of the capital, including the headquarters of state TV. But fighting is still raging in parts of the city and the rebels have not managed to find the Libyan leader. The rebels were met by jubilant crowds in central Green Square, which was previously the scene of nightly pro-Gaddafi demonstrations. Now, in news back home, Fisheries and Marine Resources Ministry has signed a four-month agreement with Aquastel, an aquaculture department at the University of Stellenbosch in South Africa, to develop an aquaculture master plan for Namibia. The ministry recently received a grant of over $3 million from the African Development Bank to develop the country's aquaculture industry. The Fisheries and Marine Resources Permanent Secretary Witala Hivelwa signed the contract on the ministry's behalf, while Professor Dani Brink signed on behalf of the University of Stellenbosch, Namibia's aquaculture sector, in its infancy, although aquaculture activities are believed to have started in the late 1800s with the introduction of carp, bass and tilapia fish species. Now, the Regional and Local Government Housing and Rural Development Ministry has ordered the Kalkaran Village Council to overturn the appointment of an acting village secretary. This followed a demonstration by some residents of the village in the Hartab region who condemned alleged corrupt practices at the village council. They also called for the immediate reinstatement of the village secretary, Neville Smith, who was suspended on the 18th of this month. The group, which was demanding for development at Kalkrant, marched along the streets of the village to the council offices. Among many other issues, demonstrators accused the chairperson of the village of allegedly interfering in the council's administrative affairs. Now, in other developments, mayors and staff members of local authorities from all over the country are gathered at Valfus Bay for the African Mayor's Climate Change Declaration 2011 and the Namibia Mayor's Annual General Meeting. The combined event will provide a platform for local authorities and their stakeholders to strengthen capacity through regional African climate change. The platform is also serving as a preparatory opportunity for Namibia's local authorities to participate in the conference of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, which is scheduled to take place in Durban, South Africa, at the end of this year. The governor of the Erongo region says flooding experienced recently in the northern and northeastern regions, as well as in the Kuse Basin of the Erongo region, is a clear indication that climate change is now happening frequently. In business news, entrepreneurs in the tourism sector are said to be lacking business presentation and negotiating and negotiation skills. Such skills are vital to succeed in business as they help businesses to market themselves and obtain financial assistance. To address, to address these challenges, the Namibia Tourism Board launched an SME program to give training to those in the industry. Participants are drawn from the tourism and hospitality industry and will be taken through a four-week-long business training session over the next three months. The training will focus on improving the marketing and operational skills of tourism entrepreneurs and to develop their business management capacity and overall business practice. In sports news, with the possible auction of the Dr. Hagegenko Rugby Stadium on the cards, questions around the actual ownership of the stadium remain unanswered. The question as to why the stadium was not transferred to the government at Independence, like other stadiums in the country, remains a burning one. The Deputy Minister of Youth, National Service, Sport and Culture, Bahamba Shifeta, stated that government intervened to prevent the stadium being auctioned. The rugby union is alleged to have used the stadium as collateral in its attempts to raise funds. However, this has led to debt amounting to over $3 million. Well, these are the stories that made headlines today. Join us again tomorrow, again during the same time slot, as we bring you more local and international news. Good night.